and welcome to the WWW Word Worship Wednesdays with Pastor D. Antonio Townsend and the Apostle Paul Missionary Baptist Church, affectionately known as Taft Church. And we'd like to thank you once again for tuning in to our broadcast. And for those of you who may be sick or shut in, remember we're praying for you, you, and you. And now that you've tuned in, let's tap into worship and the word with Pastor D. Antonio Townsville and Tap Church. shows you that he uses only 301 people total 
for this entire event. You got to remember that uh, when they started out, and, and, and when the Midianites and the Amalekites in chapter number six and seven show up at, in the valley, that it's 135,000 soldiers of people ready to fight. And in that being 135,000, you remember in chapter 7, just at the beginning, he tells them to go. And uh, the people show up. And when they show up, what does the Lord say? In verse 2, he says, uh, you got too many people. Amen. Now, I tried to do the counting and doing the math. The math wasn't mathing properly because 135,000 is way more than 32,000. Yeah. I think it's four times as many. Yeah. And so that meant it was four of their soldiers to every one of Gideon's. And yet God said in verse 2, you got too many people. <laughs> he said, because if I let them win, they'll say, he said it in the text, Israel will pump themselves up and bump themselves up. Talking about, look what we did. We saved ourselves. We didn't need God. And that's, that, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's how people are today. Some people think because of their accomplishments and achievements and the accolades that they receive that they can save themselves. But Holy Ghost sent me by on my way to glory to tell you nobody can save you but Jesus. Amen. So in the text, in the text, he said, Israel got just too many. He said, so go, go tell them, uh, whoever is fearful and afraid, go home. And so, what happens? 22,000 people tell you, we ain't come to fight. We're going home. And the, they leave. And the Lord says it again, verse 4, you still got too many people. Yes. 10,000. Now, I, I did the math again, and the math is not mathing properly, missionary Jones, because 10,000 and 135,000, that still means they got 13 to 1 now instead of 4 to 1. That didn't increase their odds of winning and decrease ours in man's eyesight. Ordinarily, you would say, we're going to lose. God, what you doing? But I told you this is from ordinary to extraordinary. And God likes to do the extraordinary. Amen. And so what he does, he said, no, 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 get in. Still got too many people with you. And that's how, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's how it is in our life. God cuts off some people, take some people out of our life, move them away from us, and what we do, we still got too many people around us. Too many people in his ear. See, God didn't want nobody in Gideon's ear. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Throughout this story, you don't hear anybody get in Gideon's ear and say anything negative. Can you imagine what it would be like to be a leader trustee and nobody ever had nothing negative to say that you do it when God calls you out to do something? Could you imagine what it would be like, missionary, if God calls you out to do something and all you had was support and help rather than negativity and everything else toxic as this generation say. People around you, Gideon didn't have none of that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So in the text, God said, no, no, no. Still got too many. It's 10,000. He's telling that to you, somebody out there I don't know who I'm preaching to. He's telling you, you still got too many people around you. You still got too many people that want to be in your entourage. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You still got too many fans. You still got too many fans. God said, you got to move some more people out of your life. You want to do the extraordinary through the ordinary, but you got to let him do his part first. Then you do your part. Then the text, God said, you still got too many people. He said, nope, they can't go with you. He said, so uh, take the people down to the wall. We're we going to test it. And that's what God does. Doesn't he always give us trials of faith? Yes. And let's us see. You never know how strong your faith is until it's tested. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you won't know how much faith you got till you go through a situation yes. where you need faith in God. Yes. Where you can only trust God. You don't know how great a faith you have till you got to put it to work. Yes. And so in the text, he says, I don't, don't, don't. everybody that laughs like a dog wants you to sit them over here. And everybody that get on their knees and drink, put them over here. So this is one of the things he tells me to go from uh, ordinary to extraordinary. You got to hearken to his voice. Hearken to his call. When he starts talking, thank you, Holy Ghost, because in this text, this is God himself talking. Yes. Remember, it started off with the angel of the Lord. Start off, the angel of the Lord showed up, but now no more angels showing up. The Father Himself is talking to you. Can you imagine if Jesus Himself starts speaking to you? 
See, because Holy Ghost talks to us. But can you imagine what it would sound like if Jesus himself spoke to you? Could you imagine what it would sound like if the Father himself started talking to you? Oh, y'all help me here, Bible readers. You remember Israel got scared when God started talking because they told Moses, oh, we can talk to God just like you. We can do what you do. And he said, okay, God said, oh, they want to talk to me? Okay, tell them I said clean up. Everybody sanctify yourself. Stay away from your wife, your everything. All y'all sanctify yourself. Watch your clothes and everything else then come tomorrow we're going to meet on the mountain. And what happened when the father showed up and started talking and lightnings and thunderings and people said hey, hey, hey Moses, hold on, hold on whatever you say he said we good with that we don't want to talk to him no more and so Gideon gets God himself is talking to him Ain't that something, y'all, when, when the father himself is talking? So the text shifted, and the father is talking to him, so he's giving him instructions. So the first thing he told me to tell you is to heed, to hearken. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hearken to his call. In other words, listen to his voice. You know, it's too many people always trying to talk to us as believers anyway. They think they know your life better than you. Think they know what's best for you. Yeah. And think they know what you need to do yeah. to improve. And yet, I think God created all of us individually yeah. and di differently and distinctly and distinguishably. So therefore, I think we ought to talk to the Lord. And when he talks, I think we need to be quiet and listen. Amen. Uh, the commercial said, when E.F. Hutton speaks, <laughs> people listen. Yeah. When God told me to tell you, when he talks, you ought to listen. When Holy Ghost talk, you ought to listen. Because he's speaking to you, a lot of you miss him because you're too busy, you're too distracted, you got too much going on, and you can't hear that still, small voice that's speaking to you. And in this case, the Father himself is giving instructions. So Holy Ghost said, make sure you hearken to his intonation and the way he says what he says and do it like he said. In the text, Gideon does what he said. He said, uh, uh, after they get together, he said, uh, it's nighttime. The Lord said, see, he's God talking to me in the verse 9. Take your, your servant down. I told you last week you can't tell everybody everything. Yeah. Can't take everybody with you. Yeah. So in this case, out of the 300, he takes one. Now guess what? You don't hear any complaints from the 300 about him taking four out. Y'all know in the church today, if the pastor selects only three out of 300, folk going to have something to say. Amen. Jesus took three out of the 12. Peter, James, and John, they went where others didn't go. You didn't hear them fussing and, and feuding until it was about the dispute of who would get what in the kingdom when Jesus passed away. That's when you heard it. You didn't hear them dispute about, well, you only took Peter, James, and John, why we couldn't go. You don't hear any of that, thank you, Holy Ghost, in the text. You got men, thank you, Holy Ghost, on one accord. You know how hard it is to get men? On one accord, yes. as opinionated as we are, as hard-hearted as we can be, as hard-headed as we can be, as stubborn as we can be, as defiant as we can be yes. to authority, yes. they did not fight with Gideon. Nobody argues and say, well, for our special to you, that ain't right. Well, he took him, and they go down. And the Lord said, I'm going to dispel your fear last week. So he told you. So that's why I said you got to listen. Because God says, I got to dispel your fear. He said, hear what they already say. You won before the fight starts. <laughs> Can you imagine if you thought about it and talked to the Lord and he tell you, the battle's not yours, it's mine, Harvey. And then he tell you, you already won. Think about when Michigan and Purdue played a football game yesterday evening, if they came out and said to Michigan in the locker room, you already won. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You ain't got to play. It would be nice if you could win without playing, but I think they call that a forfeit. When the team don't show up, it's called a forfeit. But in essence, when the team show up, they don't tell you you won before the game. It doesn't matter who the better team is on paper. You still have to play the game. You still got to go through it. And in this case, Gideon still had to go and fight like the Lord said, but he gave him strategies. 
He gave him strategies that were strange. Let me go a little. Strange strategies for supernatural. It's, it's strange because he tells him, okay, y'all, follow me. So Gideon went down, he's watching, and he said, listen, listen. And hear what the man said. Uh, the Midianites, the Amalekites, they all together, mingling and doing whatever they're doing. And Gideon is there, him and four, and a man tells a dream to another fellow. He said, behold, I dreamed the dream. And then and a, 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 a cake of barley bread tumbled down into the host of Midian and came upon the tent and smote it and it fell and turned it and the tent lay down. And the fellow answered and said, that's nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash. Verse 14, the man of Israel, for into his hand have God delivered Midian and all the hosts. Now this is your enemy talking to the other enemy. They talking to each other and he says, Oh, man, you didn't dream the dream. We lost. We gonna lose. And so, therefore, thank you, Holy Ghost, God set fear into the camp before Gideon and them ever did anything. Ain't that something? When God will send fear into your enemy's camp that's doing you harm and trying to do you harm, God will send fear into their camp to let them know you messing with the wrong one, buddy. Brother, sister, you can bump up against one that that's my child, and I handle that, and I got this. And he said, it's nothing but the sword of Gideon, and we've already been delivered. God did. This man had enough knowledge to know God was doing it. Yes. And you got folks in church that don't know God doing it. Amen. You got people working jobs that say they are believers that don't realize it's God that's waking you up every day. It's God giving you the strength to go to work and to complete your job every day. It's God giving you safe passage. He got angels in camp round about you so that you can make it to and from each destination with no hurt, harm, or danger befalling you. It's God. Yes, yes. And so he said, he said, hearken, hearken to his, his, his voice. Hearken to his call. Hearken to his intonation. Because people don't realize when you talk, when you speak, uh, you're supposed to use voice inflections. In other words, to emphasize certain words and de-emphasize others. Your tones go up and down. That's why people get in trouble with text messages. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because text language is different from spoken language. Amen. I can text you and say, I'll call you right back. And you will say, okay. But if you in a different type of mood, you can say, what you mean? You'll call me right back. And you'll get an attitude on the other end thinking something's wrong with me when all I said was, I'll call you right back. You took it as, oh, you just going to ignore me. You ain't going to call me right back. You just push the button because you don't want to talk. It has nothing to do with anything, but I said, I'll call you back. That's why it's better to talk to people rather than text. That was free. So back into this text. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said... <laughs> I need you to listen, then I need you to heed. Heed, which means obey. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Obey his course, his instruction. He tells him what to do. And then, this is the funny thing, God got quiet. He did not say anything else. And Gideon now has to do the strategizing. Now remember, Gideon is an ordinary man. He's not a soldier by trade. He's ordinary. And he takes and is about to do the extraordinary. But he's wise enough, once he's heard this, what does he do in verse 15? He worshiped first before he returned to it. That's one of the problems with people in the body of Christ. You don't worship enough. Amen. You think one hour of worship is enough for a whole week. I don't need no more church. I don't need no more sermons. I said it last week. I said it again. If you eat spiritually like you eat physically, what you look like? And if you don't eat spiritually like you eat physically, spiritually, you look emaciated. You look like you should be on one of those commercials where they try to feed the children. They need to feed you spiritually. That's how some saints look spiritually to the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm back in the text. I'm back. I'm back in the text. He said, I need you to heed my course. Do it the way I tell you to. Now, once he's done it, remember, Gideon's name means warrior. 
He ain't fought no warriors, but his name meant warrior. God put it in him. And when he knows what's in you, he knows what he can pull out of you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Like he's saying, if you ain't got no word in, he ain't got nothing to pull out in due time. So therefore, you got to put some word in you. Get in worship, then return and say, get up, y'all. They've been delivered. The Lord has already did it. And in verse 15, he does something. The Bible don't say God told him in verse 16. It don't say the Lord spoke and said divide the 300 and the three companies. Gideon did it. Because the warrior has kicked in. <laughs> the strategies of a soldier from the supernatural have now set down upon him. The brother has now devised a plan. He said, we're going to separate into three companies. And every man, he put a trumpet in his hand. And he put not only a trumpet in his hand, he puts an empty pitcher and then puts a lamp in the pitcher. He say, now, look on me and do likewise. Amen. Now, you know it's hard for leaders to get people to play follow the lead. <laughs> you, know, you know, we used to play that game when we were little called follow the lead. <laughs> and you followed the leader around wherever they went away. You followed them. Why is it so hard to get men? Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the text, these are men following a man. Amen. And it's hard for pastors to get men in church more so than anything else. Yes, yes. Why? Because men don't want to follow men. Amen. For some reason, men like to fight men. And then when men see a real man, some of them can get with it. Others can't deal with a real man. Some men are not real men. And so they intimidate men who are not real men. Uh, you know, you know, uh, they used to have that term, uh, saints, a uh, henpecked. Because <laughs> some men were what we call henpecked. Now, the thing is, we also said, it ain't nothing wrong with being henpecked if you pecked by the right hand. That was the first thing. But the second problem was if you were henpecked, it meant your wife ran you. And she said, what went down? Now, mind you, I know the saying is happy wife, happy life. And I heard happy spouse, happy house. Well, if God does the leading through the man, the woman has no problem submitting to the man, and the man has no problem letting her be the queen of the castle. Because the queen run the castle, the king just over the castle. The queen is there when the king ain't there. And so the queen is cleaning and doing all. And so the king came home and asked the queen, baby, what you did? Because she took care of the household. That was the, I, I know that was old fashioned as they call it. And that nowadays, that's antiquated and outdated. Young women, and I'm talking to you 40 and under, a lot of y'all would be married if you learned how to cook and clean and wash some clothes properly. I'm telling you, y'all be talking, I ain't doing all that. You don't have to do all that, but God will send the right man to find you if you're ready to be wife. Okay, I'm back to the text. I'm back to the text. And so he said, follow my course. So here Gideon is doing this. Now he's doing the strategy. He said, look on me. And do like this. He said, when I get to the outside of the camp, do as I do. What I do, you do. And that means a leader got to live in such a fashion that the people can follow him anywhere. <laughs> oh, he's going to say something. See, you can't do one thing here and then they follow you home and you a holy hell. <laughs> you a holy terror or a terrorist. No, that can't happen. You can't be no dominant man putting your hands on your wife and, yes. and then beating your children, abusing them, not whooping, abusing them, and think that people are gonna people not following you no way. And in the text, he said, do like I do, and do as I do. When I do it, then you do it. Yes. He said, when I blow with the trumpet, I and those that are with me, then you blow with the trumpet. Yes. Everybody all around, see, now they in the battle. And look what he tells them to say, verse 18. And say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Remember what the man just said in the dream? Didn't he just say up there in verse 14? That is that they'll say the sword of Gideon. Did he say that? The son of Joash? <laughs> he said it. So down here, what does he tell him to say? No, it ain't the sword of Gideon. It's the sword of the Lord. See the difference? Because he said, I'm ordinary. But with God, I'm extraordinary. And he said, I need you to flip the switch. He think it's me doing it. 
And he said, God did it. So Gideon down here tells them to tell him, it's the sword of the Lord in verse 18 and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men, that is in verse 19, they go, and when they get outside the camp, look at what they do in the beginning of the middle watch. Now you know, uh, the watches, it was four watches in the night. Yeah. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 9 p.m. to 12 a.m., 12 to 3, 3 to 6. So it covered the nighttime, the evening and nighttime. And so therefore, here it is in the middle watch. It just said it at 9 o'clock. As soon as they set the new watch, look what happens. They blow the trumpets, break the pictures, and they hang. And all three companies do it at the same. Can you imagine the noise that that caused? And I was praying about what, what, what kind of noise if you 300 trumpeteers, 301, including Gideon, Blow at the same time. Can y'all imagine how loud that is? And then you bring in the pictures at the same time and then shine in the light. So you got the trumpet in this hand, the picture, the light in this hand. So they see the light and hear the roar. That scared the hell out of them. Yes, yes. The text says they got confused. Look what happens when you do what God says do. Everybody in the camp started crying and started running. And they blow on the trumpets, and the Lord caused chaos and confusion to set in, and then calamity and catastrophe. Look at what happened. Chaos and confusion. They running around. They start killing each other. Because the, the power of God through the blowing of the trumpets and the breaking of the pictures is not about that part. It's about the obedience. Thank you. Amen. See, because they obeyed and they were on one accord, the Lord could do what he said do. He said, hearken to his call. He said, heed his course. And then he said, handle his charge. In other words, handle his business. Handle his interest. God got interest that we got to handle. Because he's going to do his part. Then he give in all these instructions. To this point, then he lets Gideon, the true Gideon, the warrior in him, decide what to do. And God works right with him because he cooperated with God first. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We want God to jump in and change everything in our life and do everything supernatural for us. And we ain't cooperated with him yet. So many saints I see, you won't obey God. You won't give tithes. You won't give an offering. You won't attend service. Then when you do it, it's half-hearted. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Then people pay tithes two times harder when they think that they, they are tithers, so God going to give it back right now because I paid my tithes two weeks in a row. No, baby, it's got to become a lifestyle. It's got to become second nature. So you take his money out because the bill collectors, they want their money. And they shut everything off if you don't pay them. God don't, don't take your breath because you don't give it to him. God don't take your, your mind because you don't pay your time. He don't take your strength because you don't pay your time. But he let the devourer just eat your money up. And so what happens is you keep saying, I got a hole in my pocket. I can't never keep nothing. No, because you won't give God nothing, but you want everything from here. Back to the text, back to the text. And so in the text, here we are, here we are. They crying, they blowing the trumpet, and they swinging swords and killing each other. They 120,000 people fall right here while they killing each other. And then the men of Israel gather together from the tribes of Naphtali and Asher, and others out of Manasseh who didn't fight at first. Now they want to fight, y'all. Y'all see that in verse number 23. Now they want to fight and pursued after the midnight. And Gideon sends messengers to thank you, God. I'm ending it right here. Because he said he's handled his charge, but now they got to chase after the final 15,000. And we're going to get there next week as I close this series out. I pray. Because he's handled his charge, and now 120,000 are dead, and these 300 men ain't fought nothing yet. Ain't God awesome? They ain't even used no sword yet, and here 120,000 men are dead, and the other 15,000 run. Now, I thought about it. I said, what would it look like if they would have turned around when they were running to see that the people chasing them <laughs> don't even come close to their number in chasing them. What? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to tell you, ordinary to extraordinary. What would make 300 men think they can beat 15,000 men? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That 300 is only 2%. Uh, what would make you think in your natural mind that you could win when you chasing 15,000 people? That's like a section of one section of Michigan Stadium and 300 of us sitting on the other side. And we the guest team. And guess, uh, uh, for the guest team, they go, go, and we go jump out and go fight to 15,000 people over there. And they turn and run from us? <laughs> Unless all of us got automatics and bazookas and grenades, they not going to run. They going to charge towards us. But it shows you how God works when he takes the ordinary and makes you extraordinary. When he wants to do extraordinary things through you, he shows you how he does it. Because you obey his voice. That's the first thing. When you're going out here, you got to obey the voice of God. I know God talking to some of y'all, and y'all not listening. You're not sitting still. He told me to tell you, sit down. Yes. As the old folk you say, get somewhere and sit down. Yes. Uh, too many, too many, too busy, too much, too much movement. Y'all doing too much, and a lot of people doing too much of nothing. Amen. I, I thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm watching churches try to return back to the old way, and what I'm seeing is people trying to repeat, um, gather back. Of what they used to have. Thank you. Return to the old days yes. and the old ways. And the Holy Ghost tells you there's no return back. Amen. There's no going back. We're Amen. moving forward. It's a new yes. day. It's a new church. Yes. And people are trying to thank you, Holy Ghost, recapture the old days. I can't I can't recapture the old days. As much as I like to rewind and go back to some things, I can't capture it. I, I remember uh, there was a, a, a television show used to come on, All in the Family. Yes, yes. And they used to sing that song, Those Were the Days. And they still come on syndicated, yes it does, on BTV or one of them shows, a uh, television station. But it comes on even now because it's a repeat. <laughs> and it's taking you back to when we watched these TV shows in the 70s. Uh, most of them didn't even make it to the 80s. They were the 70s TV shows, but they were talking about the 30s and 40s and 50s saying those were the days. And we talk about the 70s and the 80s saying those were the days. And we look at y'all look at us like those were the days. These are the days. No, these are not the days. If it were not for the Lord on our side, I don't know how we would make it. And I have to thank God that he likes to take the ordinary yes. and do the extraordinary. Yes. Because Jesus looked like he was ordinary. Yes. You know, I told you that, that uh, 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 Gideon was like unto a Messiah for Israel for this particular event. And as you can see, he's become a leader without being elected. <laughs> He's become a leader without asking anybody if he could do it. He simply listened to the voice of God and stepped out in faith. Holy Ghost just said something to somebody. You got to listen to the voice of God. So you can step out in faith. You don't have to be afraid. Because the Lord has already given you the victory. Because you go from a victim to a victor. You got to look at the beginning of this story. Because Israel had become victims because of their sin. But thanks be unto God. Who giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? Ah, that He had decided He wasn't gonna let it last too long, and so you see He made up and sent the angel of the Lord to tell Brother Gideon, "I've heard your cries." And I've heard my people, and when God hears our prayers, and he sees our tears, he loves us so much that he won't let it last too long. Ah, thank you, Lord, that you take ordinary men and women 
and you allow us to preach your gospel and to share your good news all over the world. I have to tell him thank you because he chose ordinary me so I can do extraordinary things like heal the sick, even raise the dead. But it's only through his power because in the text it still said the Lord did it. He just needs somebody that's willing to go. Is there anybody in the room willing to go all the way for Jesus? Ah, thank you, Lord. I'm willing to go all the way. Come hell or high water. Ah, send me. I'll go to you, Jesus. I'll hearken to your call. When you speak to me, I'll hear what you say. And I'll move out doing what you told me to do. I'll heed your course. I won't try to do it the Wayne's way. You can't do it Harper's way. You can't do it Jones way. You can't do it Adolphus way. But it's got to be done God's way. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it your way. And once I hear you curse, Lord, oh, I'm going to handle, I'm going to handle your charge. The old songwriter said a charge to keep my hand. And I've got to glory by. Oh, yeah. I'm going to handle your charge. What you told me to do, I'm going to do it until you return. Either you come get me first, or you rapture all of us together. But I, I'm going to handle it. I'm going to handle this charge. Um, no weights. For those in the church, I hope. <clears throat> if you're unsaved, unchurched, or just unsure, today is a good day. The Bible says, Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You will be saved right where you sit. Right now, you can ask him to come into your life. Repent and say, Lord, I repent of all of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life. Take control of my life. And he will. If you're unchurched, the Bible says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. As the manner of some is, for you see the day approaching. You need a covering. You need some other believers to fellowship with and to pray with and pray for you. And so he's telling me to tell you, today's a good day. And if you just aren't sure, Revelation 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. And he with me. God wants to have high love for two with you. Is there anybody today? Let him take control of your life, of your life. 
Pray once again that you were blessed by that word and of course it is our prayer and continuous prayer that you are enlightened, encouraged, and empowered by the word. And until next week, be blessed, be careful, be cautious, be conscious, be cognizant, be prayerful. Be thankful, and most of all, be all that God has called you to be, because only what you do for Christ will last.